Hey y'all, this is David, the Georgia photographer, and today I'm gonna to use the Leica SL2 to shoot wildlife photography. I'm not gonna be shooting wildlife photography with a 35 millimeter lens though. What I am gonna use is, I'm gonna set this down. This is the 500 millimeter phase Fresnel. It's what they call a generation E or Series E lens. Back in the 80s, Nikon came out with a Series E system lenses and they were all the budget lenses. These are not those lenses. These have no lever to drive the aperture whatsoever. Since they're completely electric lenses, all you need is to understand the software in the lens and you can couple them. Well, that's what Novaflex did. This is a Novaflex Nikon F-mount Series E lens to Leica L-mount adapter ring. And it's got, it's got software in it, it's electronic. It's actually weather sealed, it has gaskets. Now, I only have two Series E lenses. I have the two to 500 Nikkor and I have the 500 millimeter face Resnal. I didn't bring the two to 500 because I didn't really see much of a point in it. But what I did bring, and I am gonna mess around with, is this little bag. I'm gonna see if this will work. Because what this is, is this is the 1.4 teleconverter I have. And it is a TC14E3. But this being a E generation adapter, it also has the mechanical lever to drive the G series apertures. But I'm pretty sure this is wired for the E series as well. I've got it on the camera and it works. Focus works and aperture works, okay? Of all these switches on the side of the lens, the auto and manual switch works. The focus range limit switch, where you can either go from eight meters to infinity or full, has to be in full. When you, when you restrict it to eight meters and in, it locks down, it can't figure out what to do. And then the VR, the memory recall, which is these buttons on the barrel, them three are disabled, they ain't doing anything. The vibration reduction in the lens, I don't think is working. From what I can tell, it's not doing anything. But the camera has a stabilized sensor, so it's fine. I did put this teleconverter on it, and it gave me a lens communication error immediately. If I really want to run the tele, I'll just stick it on an icon body. But this is kind of interesting. Let's get out here. I'm over here at Volkswagen Wetlands. What I want to do is get out here and try and get some wildlife photos and see what it'll look like. Come on. I've been here a few minutes and the only thing I've got a photo of so far is another wildlife photographer. I don't know who he is, but this is his photo. I took it with the 500 millimeter and the focus is pretty sure. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna camp out here. I like this location. I don't know what it is about it, but I kind of like this spot. So I'm gonna camp out here a little while and see if I can come up with something of interest. There's a bunch of birds flying back and forth across the road. So maybe here in a minute, I'll be able to get a photo of one. Hey, there's something in that tree right there. Let's go see what we can find in this tree on the side of the road. That was weird. He just made a heavy U-turn, ran over something in the road. <laughs> right over that way is a um, 
is a, a white-tailed deer in summer coat, which is normally red. They shed the summer coat, come fall to a gray coat in the winter. It's basically built-in camouflage. I've got a bunch of different bird photos. I have learned a lot about this lens. I'll go over that in a few minutes, but the payoff for my technique today is the deer photos and some of the bird photos. Um, what I've done is I've chose a spot and I'm right here by this bush by the side of the road for two reasons. One, it's in the shade. Two, putting me in the shadow of this bush makes me harder to see. Uh, technically three is I kind of blend in with the profile of the bush. Now it does limit my field of view to my left but I sacrificed that for the field of view in front of me and up into these dead treetops that are about there behind me. And because of that, I have this better vantage point. And it's given me an opportunity to get photos of that deer. Now the deer was about 100 yards away. And the deer, last time I saw deer here was the very first time Phil Thatch brought me here. Shout out to Phil Thatch Photography. If you haven't already went over to his channel and subscribed, go on over and do that and come right back to this video. Uh, better yet, finish this video, then go to his channel. Um, his, I, it'll be at the end. There'll be a link. How about that? Anyway, the, the, that day, we saw a bunch of them crossing at basically the same place. Well, I sat down here, and I knew if I sat here for a while that the birds would get comfortable with me being here, and they'd start coming back around because I had kind of flushed them all out. And sure enough, just as I suspected, there's one sitting right there right now. But I was able to get quite a few photos of some birds right in these branches directly above me and things like that. And I got to experiment with the autofocus on at the same time. But then I just happened to be scanning the background and what I was looking for was woodpeckers because they'll fly in and land on the side of the tree trunks. And I saw something flicker. And when I looked through the camera, it was a female deer, a doe. She was standing right over there amongst some tree falls. I wouldn't have got that opportunity had I been walking back and forth or out in the open, because of, because of the position I chose and the time I spent sitting here, it, it afforded me those opportunities. So if you're out like looking for wildlife, don't, don't get discouraged if you don't see anything in two minutes. Like I literally sat here for a half hour while the camera did a time lapse. I sat here for a half hour photographing these little birds. But after it got done with that time lapse, I shut it down Long story short, that's when I saw the deer. This is a really good spot just to kind of post up and wait on wildlife to come into view. It's, it really is. Hey, I might be able to get that bird now. He's right down there. I'm gonna see if I can do that. Okay, I'm back. The takeaway. This wasn't about getting wildlife photography. What it was about was the Nikkor lens adapted to the Leica camera through the NovaFlex adapter. And it does work. It runs the focus and it runs the aperture like you want. The only problem is, is it misses focus a lot. I was having trouble if it's a small object like these little birds in the trees it would find branches or it would just straight miss or it would get the bird in the edge of the focus plane and call it good and stop trying to center it. And uh, I get birds that were slightly out of focus or soft and the tree branch right below them would be sharper. You know, you could see where it was, it was back focus on some, front focus on some. And I actually got to where I could manually focus. I'd use the autofocus to get it close. Then I'd tweak it in manually and I could pretty well get razor sharp photos. With the deer, I was looking through a lot of foliage and brush and stuff, so I was literally just manually focusing. Then I'd magnify in with the focus magnification and 
and I could see the fur on her back. I could see the individual hairs. So that's when I knew I was in and I just pressed the shutter and fire a frame. And as long as she didn't move very much, you know, if she just raised her head up or look around or whatever, I just kept firing. And they, they look good on the back of the camera. So we'll see when we get home. As far as adapting this lens to this camera, it's mediocre. I have to be honest with you, it's not, it's not the best solution. If you're, if you're wanting good, sharp, fast autofocus, you need Leica L-mount glass, or at least L-mount family glass for Leica, like the Sigma lenses, or maybe the Panasonics. You know, all three of them will work on Leica cameras, so, and, they're, and they act native to it. But this, it's a workaround, and it does technically work but it's not it's suboptimal now i would like to get a faster maybe prime lens or at least like the 24 to 72 8 and see if that shallower depth of field helps with focus accuracy but i'm guessing that it probably will i'm thinking that this one because it's f56 the depth of field was possibly giving it problems to work with I don't know. The depth of field was so deep that it was that it didn't know where I wanted it to stop focusing. You know, it's just trying to figure it out best it can. But long story short, it technically works, and it would allow you to use this system if you wanted to. If you if you wanted to carry this lens and shoot it, you can shoot it manual focus and get great photos. But if you wanted autofocus, get a Nikon body. That's just that simple. Get the Z50 and F to Z and this lens, and you'll be taking phenomenal wildlife photos. So I appreciate you watching. This is David, the Georgia photographer, saying until next time, get your camera out and go take a picture with it, all right? If you ain't done it, subscribe right down there. See you later. Bye-bye.